beautiful Bobby Eaton versus yes. uh, Brad Armstrong. Mm. Um, Bobby Eaton, he's no longer in the Midnight Express because the Midnight Express, the other two, Jim Cornette and Stan Lane, got a bit sick of Ole Anderson jobbing them out all yes, the time. Okay, they yeah. were such good performers and they were taken for granted. And so Jim Cornette and Stan Lane decided they were going to leave WCW to set up their own promotion, mm. which they did, Smoky Mountain Wrestling. One of those places that was quite ahead of its time, very sort of critically applauded, but made zero money. Yeah. I mean, real sort of, you know, hillbilly wrestling audience. Audiences, wrestle you know. me money. <laughs> yes. Wrestle me money. Yeah. And uh, Bobby Eaton, they basically said to him, do you want to come with us? And Bobby Eaton said, well, I've got about a year left on my contract. Mm. And Jim Cornette said, look, I will never, ever be able to match that financially. So why don't you stay here? Bobby Eaton did exactly that. And when Dusty Rhodes came in, Dusty Rhodes was like, this guy is great. Mm. And he then gave him a, a two-year contract worth $170,000 right. a year. So Bobby Eaton suddenly has found himself with a nice contract with someone who really admires him and wants to push him. And once Dusty was in charge, Bobby Eaton did get a good singles push. Mm. He ends up getting the, the TV title from Arn Anderson later in the year. But Bobby Eaton, one of those guys, again, you can go back and watch his stuff, and he is always good. And even though he isn't a bloke who ever set the place on fire, he's one of those guys who, if he came out for a match, you knew you were going to see what was going to be one of the top matches in that entire night he was always really good and um, they've given him music in this where he comes to the ring and it's got fake chanting on it and people going Bobby 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 and it gets to a certain point he gets to the ring and then the, the chanting stops, stops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's really Dead. sort of like oh dear he, whether it be in tag teams or singles he's one of the most talented superstars that WCW has ever had uh, on any of our events I look for this to be a tremendous confrontation between two men and then uh, then they introduce the referee Randy Anderson which is Randy Anderson oh wonderful name <laughs> it's the sort it's just like a peeping tom is up in court and and he's addressing the, the defendant and, and the people who are going to judge his fate and so like, i'm not a voyeur i'm not a criminal voyeur i am simply a randy anderson <laughs> which among us today <laughs> cannot say, say they're a real they are not a real randy anderson you madam you sir no you've never randed <laughs> you've never randy anderson <laughs> of course you have sir i can see it in your eyes <laughs> um, the uh, little line that you know that Bobby Eaton must have been hearing and having been given this you know expensive two year contract mm. a couple of months before is just when he's going back watching this video and you get Dusty Rhodes going let me make a prediction in 1991 Bobby will win a major singles championship within <laughs> WCW you must be going fucking yes that guy's choosing who yes. wins these things I am well in um, <laughs> I'm going to go on record right now taking a look at Bobby Eaton coming to the ring beautiful Bobby Eaton 1991 will win a major singles title with WCW. He was always, you know, held back slightly Bobby Eaton because he just could not do the mic. You know, he's if you could combine Bobby Eaton and Junkyard Dog, you mm. would have either <laughs> one of the best wrestlers in the world or one of the worst. I mean, it, it would be, uh, depends which bit's the, the shit child. Be, shit would be getting eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Silently, possibly? I don't know. Um, but he's going up against uh, Brad Armstrong. Mm. And Brad Armstrong's another guy <laughs> very much like Bobby Eaton. So Brad Armstrong is one of the most underrated wrestlers of his era. I mean, I think Jim Ross actually said a line where he said... He he was one of the more talented in-ring performers that I've ever worked with. One of the most underrated all-time greats ever in the business. The person who normally people say that about is Bobby Eaton. Yeah. So what you've got here is a match between two people who are basically underrated. They're both so underrated, and people talk about how underrated they are, that they're almost rated yes because people are always overrating yes. how underrated they yeah, were yeah, yeah, yeah. but they they have a, a decent match it's held back in a way because the crowd never think for a moment that Brad Armstrong is a legitimate danger mm. to Bobby Eaton here early on they say uh, Brad Armstrong's got a young brother fighting in Operation Desert Shield uh, that is Brian his brother who would go on to have a much bigger career as Road Dog oh. um, he was over there doing his uh, <clears throat> Desert Shield um, Road Dog would actually get his career start in WCW later in this year um, mainly doing house show matches um he went to Smoky Mountain Wrestling, the place we just talked about. And then he came back to WSW before he'd go to WWF, where he'd have a very, very big headlining career as the road dog. Mm. What um, is funny is that yeah, they are both good. And you'd slightly think that he'd go with the more handsome, younger guy mm. who could really go in the ring. But they're like, no, it's Bobby Eaton's time. And Brad Armstrong <laughs> just sort of going, I get a feeling I'm never going to get a time. <laughs> oh, um, no. And you know what? He was right. Yeah. Dusty Rhodes did try to help him out. And he gave him gimmicks over the years. He became the Candyman Brad Armstrong, mm. where he'd hand out 
out sweets to children in the audience. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's never going to make Innocent you a no. world champion, is it? <laughs> no. You know, um, um, he then got put under a mask because they thought, well, maybe it's his face that's not working here. <laughs> um, they put him under a mask and he worked as the third partner of the Freebirds as Fantasia. That name had to be changed to Bad Street when Disney threatened legal action. <laughs> and really infamously, he was given the character of Arachnaman where he was a yellow and purple sort of spider um, right, okay. a superhero yes. who would wrestle. Can you guess who then threatened legal action against him? That's right, Marvel. Marvel right, Comics yeah, yeah, came okay. forward. So Arachnaman. Every gimmick they gave him, a huge, <laughs> massive multinational corporation, basically sort of went, we're going to sue you. You're like, okay, you know. I it's think like, uh, they're sort of like, the problem with Brad Armstrong is continually people are trying to sue him. You know, <laughs> really unfair. We're going to call him legal writ from now on. Yeah. Well, later on in 1997, when his brother, his road dog, is doing really well in mm. WF, they actually give him a road dog rip-off gimmick. They called him Buzzkill. And that didn't get over because at no point had they ever really made, the, made d- it made clear the that these yeah, two yeah, were brothers. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, Brad was just not famous enough. You'd be like, oh, so that's road dog's brother. Yeah. You know, it's just a disastrous like, way to start and it. Like going, You're going to like this. Baby. Turn on, baby. Better take it back. It don't work. Looks like a, a lamp of some sort that he's trying to plug in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Buzzkill seems enthralled with that. Here, well, everybody should have one of those. How do you make this? Whatever it is, man. That's, uh, got nothing to do with your life. You can sit around and stare man. at that. It's like he's entranced by that lamp. He's just sitting there on the mat. I can do that, bro. I can do that. But now Chavo Jr. putting the headset, so he's got a disc man. Let me guess, it's got to be either Hendrix or the Grateful Dead. Buzzkill or the Baba Zeba. Look, we have to pay a tithe to Marvel every time we use Hulk Hogan. Yeah. But we're not willing to do that for you. <laughs> no. So Arachna Man is going. So yeah. the writing's on the wall very much for you. In fact, we're worried that a Brad Pitt is going to hear that you're called Brad Armstrong. <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to call you Zublaz. <laughs> we believe that ten, that is not trademark. Just ten Zs. <laughs> um, he had a, an unspectacular career, unfortunately, mm. even though he was a very, very good, competent ring performer. He uh, injured his knee in 2000 during... Uh, I was trying to work out what this was, um, but it said uh, he injured his knee in March 2000 in an accident backstage at a WCW Saturday Night taping where Armstrong got run over by Juventud Guerrera, severely injuring his knee. Wow. So whatever happened, whether it was something the WCW were putting on, it did legitimately end his career. Right. Uh, it's a funny thing with wrestling, isn't it, where you leave behind a body of work and you can watch something like this and you can go, gosh, you know, it never happened for him, but it should have done. And mm. you can see here, you know, he's perfectly good, but again, just there's a, a failure to connect and it's probably not down to him, it's just the position he's put in. But you can watch a match like this and Bobby Eaton and he go together. It's so smooth and they, the two of them are really sweating mm. and they're sweating because they're working hard and they work hard through this. And this is the sort of match, Bobby Eaton versus Brad Armstrong, neither of them are huge names, neither of them are going to be headliners. But when and they put them together they go go out there and just have a fucking good match mm. and that's something you just did not get in WWF at this time yeah. I know that 1991 is his big year and you just every time you see him come out it's just thrilling it's like oh here he is I know this is going to be good this is going to be at least 12 minutes yeah. and this is going to be great fun And, and then, oh, bang. And then uh, the older brother from the Wonder Years. That's is, right. Who has some kind of weird history with the WCW. He does, yeah. So this is Jason Harvey. Mm. Um, he was the bully in the Wonder Years, wasn't he? Kevin? Oh, he's the bully. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's the, oh, yeah. Uh, is he an older brother or a bully? I thought he was bully? the older brother. I think he's an older okay. brother oh, and okay. a bully. And a bully, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, um, he basically, uh, he's he's got such a horrible, snarly face. Yes. He's absolutely perfect in that role. Yeah. It's very hard to differentiate what he's like in real life because I just picture him as that. He's a very formative <laughs> bully guy. 
Um, yeah, he turned up. He was he was on the Wonder Years, which was a huge, huge show. Mm. Um, he I found a little interview with him. We did later in life. He said, "I've always been a fan of wrestling. Wrestling is what brought my father, my brother, and I to the couch on Saturday mornings." He then mentioned that Ted Turner had bought the syndication rights to the Wonder Years. I was in Atlanta at the Omni, and I'd always loved it. And I was friends with Dusty Rhodes. He throws in. <laughs> I think this is a strange sort of thing where, again, he was a such a big star that it was good for wrestling if they wanted to, especially taking on WWF, who had the kids. You brought in this guy from mm. from this show. It was also all tied up with TBS and Turner, who owned WCW ultimately. Yeah, they sort of pulled him in. Um, he said, I, I did a series called Wild Side with Meg Ryan and Terry Funk for ABC. <laughs> I was around. They asked me if I wanted to get involved with the wrestling. And, of course, I was game to do it. <laughs> now, there were rumours that Jason Harvey was only there at, because he was dating the interviewer Missy Hyatt at this time. Okay. Uh, they did, uh, I believe, have a relationship. I'm not going to get into it. It's none of my business. <laughs> but it's just a bit of colourful background. And it's boring business still, really, isn't it? I think <laughs> yeah. about it. I mean, it's like, who the fuck cares? Hey, girls, you'll never guess who I'm having sex with. <laughs> Who are you having sex with? You know the child from the Wonder Years? <laughs> oh. Not the really little one. Not the one from Never Ending Story. The big one. The, one. the Princess big Bride. little one. Is it Princess Bride or Never Ending Story? Uh, Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Yeah. The, with Andre. I mean, the wrestling mm. connections come fast, don't they? Mm. Um, Jason Columbo, Harvey did Peter actually... Falk ever in, was, was, <laughs> yeah. Peter Falk was he ever in wrestling? in wrestling? I think he might have done a movie. He might have been in Grunt the movie, Peter Falk. Okay. Which was a, a wrestling thing about crooked promoters. <laughs> I'll double check. I'm sure oh. he is. Harry Sears is a self made showman. I've got two of the most sensational kids to ever hit this business. With a traveling act that hits the road every day. Why are we doing all the pushing when we're paying all the bills? And opens every night. And he's taking his boys along with him. The California Downs! MGM presents Peter Falk. That's right! Vicki Frederick and Laureen Landon in All the Marbles. Uh, well, Jason Harvey will go on to do a Clash of the Champions where he is in the ring and he gets hit over the head with Paulie Dangerously's phone. Okay. And uh, he did it really well. And people thought, oh, you know, good little actor, obviously. Um, it, it turned out, no, it wasn't. He did absolutely <laughs> get knocked out by it. Paul, Paul Heyman didn't have a gimmicked phone. Again, no. back in wrestling, you're just sort of like, well, that would take time. Yeah, just use, just gonna, use okay. a real like, one. And how many would I have to bring? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he just smacked him over the head with it. Yeah. Um, he said, I remember seeing black before I hit the canvas. It wasn't gimmicks at all. Good God. He, said. Um, he did ask Fred Savage, who's his co-star, if he'd like to come and do something in the wrestling mm. thing. They talked about, Dusty Rhodes said to him, you know, great wrestling is the idea of like, you know, rivalry between brothers. So maybe have a word with Fred Savage and we could do a Wonder Years thing. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Jason Harvey said, I jokingly said something about it one day and his response was something like, in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> a child absolutely coating you off. Oh, 